Coming up on the Angus Report, news from the American Angus Association on updated dollar value indexes. Angus Juniors and their families are in Nebraska this week for the National Junior Angus Show and we learn what's in store. Highlights from the recent Beef Leaders Institute. Also, how preventing sickness adds dollars back to the ranch and a Virginia Angus breeder and veteran helps us give thanks for our nation's many freedoms. This is the Angus Report. Hello and welcome to the Angus Report. I'm Crystal Albers. And I'm Jenna McCrell. Our top news this week. The American Angus Association's dollar value indexes have served as a trusted tool for more than a decade, incorporating EPDs and real-world economic factors to simplify multi-trait selection. To ensure dollar values accurately reflect market conditions, Angus Genetics Incorporated releases annual updates to the economic assumptions used to calculate the selection tools. Angus breeders and their customers may have seen some slight changes beginning July 1st, however, due to lower cattle market prices. AGI President Dan Mosier shares an update. Every July we update the economic assumptions that go into our selection index tools, the Angus dollar values like dollar B and dollar W. We want to provide the most up-to-date current market prices and costs to go in to predict profit differences between Angus bulls. So on July 1, you'll see a change in bulls, not because of their genetics, but because of the prices and costs that we'll put into it. Uh, on average, uh, bulls will go down about $6 for dollar B and about $2 for dollar W because of the lower calf prices that producers are experiencing relative to last year. Generally, the bulls will rank about the same. It's just that the highest value won't be quite as high, the lowest value won't be quite as low, and the average will decline just a little bit. But again, the way bulls rank in the Angus population will be very similar to where it was before. Be sure to visit Angus.org to learn more about dollar values and how to use them to make the most accurate selection decisions. The 2016 National Junior Angus Show is underway this week in Grand Island, Nebraska, where more than 800 Angus Juniors from 36 states have gathered to stampede the sand hills for what's expected to be a record-breaking event. 1,800 head of Angus cattle were entered to compete in one of the year's most anticipated livestock events. The association's Jacqueline Clark shares what's in store. We're excited to host uh, the 2016 National Junior Angus Show. We're looking forward to record entries. Uh, we have about 1850 head entered with 829 exhibitors. It is a fun-filled, jammed, packed week of all kinds of events. A lot of it is about the animal that they have and their caretaker of. However, on the other hand, a lot of the kids participate in all 16 of the character life skills contests. And so through the njs.info website. Um, on that website, there will be webcasting and commentary uh, live from our show ring, and uh, also some of the opening ceremonies and closing ceremonies will also be available there. The 2016 Beef Leaders Institute welcomed 20 Angus producers recently to the American Angus Association as part of a tour of the entire beef production chain, including certified Angus beef headquarters in Wooster, Ohio. BLI is an annual event funded by the Angus Foundation, which brings together Angus members for a five-day leadership experience and focuses on boosting industry knowledge while participants gain first-hand experience of the nation's quality beef supply. These kind of experiences are priceless. They bring everything back into perspective. You learn what's truly important. You get kind of a refresher on things from the seed stock side all the way to the retail side and it just brings everything into perspective. It shows you the importance of, you know, selecting good genetics all the way up to good manufacturing practices and then food safety. And it's just, it makes you recognize and understand the big picture. We'll bring you more BLI coverage in future episodes, or you can go online to ingus.org to learn more. Genetically modified organisms and whether or not the nation's food supply should include non-GMO designations has been a heated debate in Washington, D.C. for several months. It's prompted by a new law in Vermont, which went into effect July 1st, that requires mandatory labels that indicate whether products were produced or partially produced with genetically engineered products. The move could establish a dangerous precedent for states issuing their own individual GMO policies and negatively impact the nation's food companies and distributors. In response, Senate Agriculture Chairman Pat Roberts and Senator Debbie Stabenow reached an agreement that would nullify Vermont's law and rather set federal standards for GMO labeling. 
Congress is expected to move on the policy in the coming weeks, and industry groups, such as the National Association of State Departments of Agriculture, are supporting a national approach to handling the labeling requirements. The, uh, the backdrop to the GMO labeling debate is the fact that Vermont does indeed have a law that will uh, initiate mandatory on-pack GMO labeling of foods uh, starting July 1st, 2016. Uh, this is a situation where the entire U.S. food industry would have to comply with one state's labeling law, and which would impact their labels across the other 49 states. Registration is now open for the 2016 Angus Convention, which will be held November 5th through the 7th in Indianapolis, Indiana. The association's premier event includes an engaging lineup of educational speakers and workshops, the third annual Angus University, live animal demonstrations, entertainment by Sawyer Brown, and the organization's 133rd annual meeting of delegates. Go online to angusconvention.com to view a schedule and registration information. And the association is seeking input from its members as part of an extensive long-range planning process. The organization sent members survey links last week via email, and members may also submit their input through AAA login. Survey responses, which will be accepted until July 31st, will be used to help craft the association's efforts to create the long-range strategic vision for the nation's largest single-breed beef cattle organization. The organization has worked to collect input from all areas of the beef cattle business, and we'll have more on that effort as it develops. When we return, investments in herd health now can add profit later. Then we visit with Angus breeder and veteran Jerry Gustin, who reminds us to celebrate freedom this Independence Day. Visit Angus.media to continue watching this episode of The Angus Report. The Angus Report is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the makers of Safeguard Cattle Dewormer. Healthy cattle perform better. Add Safeguard, add pounds. Contact your veterinarian or animal health supplier today. Have you discovered self-deworming cattle products? All the benefits of an effective deworming without all the labor, handling, and stress. Discover Safeguard self-deworming cattle products. Ask your local animal health provider or visit safeguardcattle.com for more information. Beef quality is everyone's responsibility including yours. That's why the checkoff funded Beef Quality Assurance Program is key to your future. BQA, empowering people because you can make a difference. Taking responsibility because it's our job, not someone else's. Working together because product safety and wholesomeness is everyone's business. Find out more at bqa.org. Horn flies cost cattle producers nearly $1 billion a year. They interrupt grazing, cause loss of blood, and impact your bottom line. By incorporating Altacid IGR into your supplement program, you can prevent the emergence of adult horn flies. Altacid IGR will significantly reduce stress on your cattle. For pennies a day, you can control the most costly parasite and increase your profitability. Contact your feed supplier to incorporate Altacid IGR today. Did you know that your checkoff works to safeguard beef's image and reputation? There's lots of noise on the internet, but did you know the checkoff uses the website factsaboutbeef.com to tackle myths? Did you know factsaboutbeef.com also shares stories about beef production? While you're focused on managing your beef business, your checkoff is busy protecting the image of your industry and your end product. Get to know your checkoff at mybeefcheckoff.com. Angus breeders, predictability is now more affordable. Introducing the i50K from Zoetis, a genomic test that allows you to dig deeper for untapped herd potential. Access genomic information on even more animals for less cost without sacrificing accuracy. i50K from Zoetis helps you make more informed decisions sooner and better match your females to that perfect sire. To learn more, visit i50k.com. 44 farms are registered Angus breeder in Central Texas. We market about 1,600 bulls a year. Uh, the silencer is uh, vital to our operation. 
The neck bars on the silencer shooter are excellent for restraining the bulls for giving shots. Those big bulls get to swing their head around and it's really hard to hold them. And those neck bars work excellent. We've had it for seven years and it's been great the whole time. So at the end of the day, there's less stress and uh, you're happier and the cattle are happier. It just makes for a better work environment. Indiana this fall, the crossroads of America become the crossroads for the cattle business where Angus breeders, commercial cow-calf producers, business professionals, and thought leaders converge during the 2016 Angus Convention. Don't miss your chance to learn, engage, and enjoy during the event that's driving innovation and fueling leadership in the beef business. Join us November 5th through the 7th at the Indianapolis Convention Center for our popular educational sessions, Angus Tours, an expansive trade show, nationally known entertainment, and more. Angus Convention in Indiana. This is Angus Country. Go to angusconvention.com today.